we think that for brokers, um, being able to talk to their clients about captives is really important, um, really for two fundamental reasons. Um, either because they're looking to win new business uh, and therefore they're taking a solution to a prospective client that the incumbent broker perhaps has not offered, or conversely, um, because they recognize the need to provide their existing clients with choices as to how they go about financing their risk and to make sure that they are in fact giving them the very best advice um, and taking them through all the options. Uh, because it's absolutely certain that if you as a broker are not talking to your clients about captives where it's appropriate, then somebody else is going to take the opportunity to do so. Um, I, I think there's very little doubt about that. Um, and so the use of captives uh, from the point of view of the broker, um, first of all, you know, a good broker should be in the business of providing great solutions for his clients. Um, but, you know, that, that's really what we want to do. A captive is one option. I, we do hear, of course, uh, some reluctance amongst some brokers based around the, in my view, misconception um, that this may be a threat to their revenue because many brokers are accustomed to a commission-based revenue model. But I think there are a number of things to consider here. First of all, um, commission isn't the be all and end all. Um, many brokers work very well on a fee-based model, uh, which frequently clients actually rather like. They know where they stand, they can see what they're paying for, um, and uh, you know, they can have a grown-up conversation about compensation. Um, the next thing is that having a client who is using a captive insurance solution, whether it's their own standalone captive or whether it's being a member of a group captive, does a number of other things that are beneficial to the broker um, rather than specifically beneficial to the insured. Um, the first is that it actually creates a very, very sticky relationship. Um, it, it, it makes the account more difficult to attack and it really, tends to increase the collaboration between broker and client. Um, so, you know, that's one thing. Um, the other thing that I think it does is offer the broker the opportunity to introduce ancillary services um, that are necessary to the uh, operation of the captive insurance program. And I'm thinking really about things like uh, you know, loss control or claims uh, claims adjudication and management through, you know, the broker's TPA services, for example. So I, I think there are uh, great revenue opportunities. Uh, I think that there clearly uh, are long-term sort of cementing of that uh, broker-client relationship uh, opportunities. Um, and uh, I think also that, Frankly, if it's the right solution for your client, then it's the right thing to do. I will say I actually was talking to uh, a broker just this morning, um, somebody who admitted he hadn't been in the industry very long, uh, but was eager to learn about captives. Um, and uh, he had met the owner of a gun manufacturer. Um, and you can imagine this is a challenging industry. Um, and in talking to the owner of that business, he was told that the only place they could go for insurance was Lloyd's. And uh, the broker started to think to himself, well, I wonder what I can offer. I wonder what we could do differently. So he came to talk to me about uh, captive insurance and uh, how it might work for his client. Um, and clearly, when you have a limited market available to you as an insured, uh, you are not going to see a huge amount of competition on price. So coverage might be rather expensive. And you may also find that it's somewhat restrictive uh, with exclusions perhaps in the policy uh, or policies that uh, mean that that coverage actually has less value to you or is less useful to you than it might otherwise be. So I, I, I think that, you know, 
I applaud that guy who had been in the industry for only eight months for thinking, I need to learn about captives because this will help me have a constructive conversation with a prospective client. Sabrina, I think I can add a couple of, of, of comments to, uh, to, to, to Martin's um, impressions, which, which are spot on. Um, you know, unfortunately, for, for the last 20 years, we've um, had a lot of interactions with brokers that have uh, come in at the last second with a very challenging renewal, and they're looking for a captive solution to be, uh, as my partners say, a, a silver bullet. Um, and for better or for worse, uh, most times um, the captive is not a short-term solution for a very challenging renewal. And we have to reframe the conversation to say that these are wonderful tools uh, over the long haul to be able to better manage the total cost of risk and, and to better you know, finance that risk over time. Um, where we've seen really the most success would be incumbent brokers, frankly, who, as Martin said, are very focused on providing uh, the whole suite of solutions. Um, they've got great client control. They understand where the risks are, and they're looking at captives not as necessarily, you know, competition, but certainly as another, um, you know, useful tool to better retain clients and, and potentially to, to capture and move upstream with with larger and more sophisticated client bases. Um, we have been successful with brokers that use captives to wedge into a certain situation and be able to take over a client, um, but it's tougher, right? It's a more challenging path and, and ultimately requires more education and, and, and engendering of that trust. Um, what I would really encourage brokers to do relative to tr trying to get more successful captive engagements would be to take a more holistic um, approach to captives, meaning that you know if you're a property and casualty specialist, if you're a benefits specialist, um, to start getting an understanding about how captives can be utilized um, in these other settings. Um, if you are a trusted advisor to your clients, you want to step into their shoes. You want to understand where their biggest problems are and see if these captives can help with some of those uh, problems. Um, so having a, a, a more granular understanding about ownership of captives and entity structuring and tax elections may be the difference uh, that moves the needle for your clients. So one uh, component I would always encourage brokers to do is to get past a superficial understanding about captives so that you can better counsel your clients. That, that's a great point. And I, I like the fact you said it's, it's, it's best for incumbent brokers. Um, it can be used to get a client, but Jonathan and I had a guy last week who was trying to use a captive to get a new client, and he didn't really understand risk and the price of risk. So when we came down to it, he's like, well, I, this this doesn't look good. Can, can we reduce the premiums he's paying into his captive? And I'm like, sure, but they're not, they're going to have claims and they won't have enough capital. And it's, you know, the incumbent brokers, they have a relationship and they're not trying to use a captive as a commodity to come in to just reduce price. And I think that's where, uh, you know, the incumbent broker is that that's just a, a great point. 